people, it is Dave, Duncan Kyle back for another review and for this review Duncan Kyle and I have been checking out the new album from Genre, blend, genre Bending Ooh. instrumental band Polyphia. The band's new album Remember That You Will Die will be released on October 28th via Rise Records. So, uh, since their formation in 2010, Polyphia have made them na- their name for themselves by blending intricate guitar riffs with hip-hop rhythms, bass-heavy trap music, and progressive metal and rock influences. To date, the band has released three studio albums, uh, Muse in 2014, Renaissance in 2016, and New Level, New Devils in 2018, as well as two EPs and a handful of singles. The impressive catalogue has earned them 300 million plus global streams, and 90 million plus YouTube YouTube views and international acclaim. That's ten pounds ninety nine um, <laughs> in total. Because <laughs> that's 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 what happens on these platforms, yeah. motherfuckers. We'll round up. We'll say eleven. Round eleven up. pounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, the album also features collaborations with uh, Snot, not the band, uh, Chino Moreno from the Death Tones, Brass. Tracks, uh, Steve Vai. Well, that, Dave, Dave uh, mentioning people that he clearly doesn't know. Brass <laughs> tracks. <laughs> yeah. And many more. Um, <laughs> produced, by, <laughs> produced by guitarist Tim Henson and Scott LePage. Uh, the album also features production from Rodney Jenkins, who has worked with Michael Jackson, Destiny's Child, and Lady Gaga. Uh, a producer called Judge, who has worked with Marshmallow, Black Bear, and Young Thug. Yeah, the Young long, Thug. The, young, <laughs> the band's long-time collabor- collaborator, Y2K, <laughs> and Johan Lennox, who has worked with Kanye and Phineas and more on Slip Tracks. So, um, album <laughs> number four. My favourite intro ever from Dave. <laughs> <Just, laughs> sounded like an old person trying to programme in a digital clock. <laughs> Oh to to Alexa, Alexa, <laughs> what's no understanding me? How does this work? Amazing. I also have one of those leather flip cases on my phone, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> anyway, um, album number four. Um, and I must admit, I was really looking forward to this. Um, I, I'm not a guitarist, but there's, there's something about this band's uh, blend of genres that hmm. just really works for me um plus they they, they look they look super lit when they're doing it you know what i mean uh, yeah. <laughs> right. everything's wrong now use the word lit in 2022 anyway i was trying to get back from the the old man dave vibes a minute ago and you know try to bring it up to speed too you know, far back in time lit but i feel like i've <laughs> probably you fucked up yourself even that. more yeah yeah um i um I, to be honest though i would argue that this this isn't just a, a guitarist's kind of wet dream. Oh, no. um, the, you mus- the musicianship across the board from this band, you know, is is pretty exceptional. Their um, bass player can play a string or two, Dave. <laughs> yes, actually. Interesting to say that. Um, Kyle, I'm interested in your take on this for a few reasons. Uh, one, just as a musician and what's involved here, but also as a producer that dabbles in various genres, from, you know, electronica to metal, um, was there? Was there? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm thinking maybe there's something that piqued your interest on this. Possibly. What did you think? What did you like? Did you like this? Like, what are you thinking? There are elements of this album I like. Okay. Like the bass tone <laughs> and yep. the bass yep. playing, obviously, and uh, some of the production. I think some of it on the guitar is far too clean. Okay. Uh, it's just not my thing. I feel like guitar benefits from a more dirty sound almost all the time even on the clean parts it's like far too clean and too pristine and just makes you go i don't like it Mm. but the playing is wonderful absolutely like out of this world the mix of genres um Mm. uh, it's hit and miss with me to be honest like the last track uh second last track with chino moreau not bad Mm. Okay. Couple of the couple of them, like you know, yeah, it works. Other than I can't get over the fucking trumpets on the first track. It's just like, oh, <laughs> it just I don't know. It's very hit and miss. It doesn't like the trumpets, like, huh? I love Who's trumpets, generally? but I just don't know why it didn't work work on this. Oh, I right. just, yeah, I'm just oh, I don't know. I'm not, it just feels very. I mean, I like disjointed, weird, jaggy riffs and stuff like that. But I don't know what it is about this. It just didn't hit me in a very good way. But I mean, 
speaking of production, it's very, very well produced. It's it's almost, almost overproduced, but it's just a yeah. step back from that. And I kind of like it because it it's keeps that up. Production. Well, yeah, yeah like, that's a, so. that's but, a pop. This is like as pop is yeah. overproduced out the fucking asshole. But this is like a few steps away from that, which is great because it's kept a lot of the human element of all the guitar and bass and all this stuff for mm. the most part. Um, and in the, the few vocal parts I heard, except for the one which is auto tuned to hell. But I mean, that's for effect, not because the guy can't sing, but I still didn't like it. <laughs> Um, and with Steve Vai playing, of course, there's no editing because you don't edit Steve Vai. New, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because no, it'll be like Jesus. It'll be, be like snapping Jesus's hammer. Yeah, you'd be and blacklisted. Like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You'd just be like, yeah, that guy. Yeah. Never also, don't again. Think, I, yeah, I don't think you have to. <laughs> like, no, I think that's the thing, like, at all. Yeah. I think I, I genuinely think like you could give him the shittiest amp ever and the, like a, yeah. like a, a elastic sense. band tied around a fucking toilet roll holder yeah. and it would still sound bitching. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I completely uh, agree. So, yeah, like I said, there's there's elements of this I like, but on the, for the most part, I can see that it's it's very well put together. It's very well played and excellently written and all that. And they're very good at what they do. And all the people involved are very good at what they do. Mm. It just, it's not for me. I'm just, that's it. <laughs> you okay. know, it's just not my thing at all. I've never been a fan of this kind of stuff. And I don't think I ever will be. It's just, there's not enough of like a thread going through the whole album to bring it into a coherent thing. It just feels like, oh, here's one with a bit of a trap. And here's one with a bit of this. And here's one with Steve I. And here's one with Chino Marino. It's like, okay, fine. It just, just just kind of feels a bit sort of thrown together a little bit, and but also at the same time not because it's super well produced, so it's just a confusing mess for me. Just, just don't get along with it, which is a shame because it's clearly very well done. So. Mm. Okay, what can do? sorry, Duncan, what about yourself? Well, if Kel's on one end of the scale, I'm on the other. Right? <laughs> um, this is fucking awesome, like ge- genuinely, absolutely fucking awesome. Um, like almost like everything that Kyle isn't enjoying or doesn't fit with his sensibility totally falls in with mine. Okay. Um, I think the, the biggest noticeable step for me was the push towards a more traditional kind of modern pop style. And mm. actually, I think this is like, I think the when Kyle's saying that like too clean on modern pop, I think that's because it doesn't feature the instrumentation here. But the mm. same techniques are being used. I I think this I. What's, what's interesting about the band's journey, if you followed them from, from back in the day through, is every album seems to be them exploring something new, right? Like it, whether it's uh, like working with certain producers that'll bring out a certain element, or you know the, the, them specifically mixing in whatever musical, whatever musical trope or idea or whatever's kind of mod like you go back and listen to some of those early ones they're almost dated by some of the techniques that are used or some of the stylings that are used was well, mm. kind of and not in a bad way it's just that's what was popular at the time um what was really interesting about this release is that oh one yeah there's you can't you cannot stress how great the guitar playing is you, ju- you honestly you can't it's almost to the stage that you have to just not talk about that anymore Mm. because it's a fucking given on every single track and it, yeah it's flourishes of the same techniques like he has a specific sound and the techniques are the same but it's the way he utilizes them in the songs mm. like it's not at the it's not at the detriment to not playing conventional guitar parts there are conventional guitar parts here mm. it's just you get hit with these poppy stringy slappy twisty bendy note segments that are at sometimes the full composition of a track and then other bits just to add an interlude or a little quirky bendy bit at the end of a of a, a conventionally played riff on the background of that you have exceptional bass playing the bass player like knows exactly the moments to start doing a bit of that slap and bringing it to the forefront and when to sit comfortably behind building up the mix between electronic and standard conventional drum playing it's always in there and it's it's fucking great as well then on top of that the very 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 smart use of vocalists now we're not getting it's very easy for a band like this to get guest vocalists in and they're all of the same genre or the same style you don't get that here you get ones that are bringing in elements of rap you get like Sophie Black, who I didn't know before, but I fucking loved her on ABC, which is track five, where she like, and it is because she speaks a bit of Japanese. <laughs> yeah. Hold it down with that. You bring it in, 
gives me the horn. But like, <laughs> she's doing a mixture of lots of different things, being very playful, but her rhythms as well, vocally, yeah. are really, really, really smart. Like, really mm-hmm. smart against what's being played. Very well done. Um, the the use of Kill Station, who also brings in his elements, really, really cool. Uh, not familiar with Snot out with their mega like court case that happened, I think, earlier this year, where the band Snot uh, were like, you can't, you, you can't go in and he went on some metal tour. So he's obviously got creds in the genre anyway. Uh, Chino, put Chino in anything. Like, Chino, once again, defines to me that if he just decided to be like a pop star, mm. It would still be just as successful. His vocals are so, like, see if they wanted to just do an album with him. Mm. I would listen to that to death. Um, Steve Vai, Steve Vai. Yeah. So like, once again, it's a, it's a like. I wonder if Steve Five can fit into this band of exceptional players. Oh, look what he, he can. Right. Um, but yeah, across the board, I just I thought it was there was nothing that like as someone that's listened to the last two albums at least their first one I think I'd, I'd still hear the first one you kind of know what you're getting with them the yeah. twist on every album is the flavour that they add yeah. and it's because they're surrounded by exceptional producers and exceptional musicians mm. and you get that here like the, the opening track Genesis with the, the trumpets fucking great <laughs> because I just wasn't expecting it on the first track mm. but then I'm sitting there thinking this isn't my first time to the barbecue like I know this is what this band does mm. and as a result, it works. I don't think there's any any element here that doesn't work or they push things too far. I think if anything, you could argue, and it's the argument that we've had since day zero with this band, what genre do they actually sit in? You know what I mean? To me, yeah. this feels like more of a pop album than anything else. But yeah. that's not a bad thing. Pop's flung around as if it's a filthy word. Hmm. And metal circles, it really, really isn't. Yeah. Um, if it's done well. And this is all written by the band, performed by the band. So, yep. you know, I mean, our, our usual criticism is there's too much pro- producer involvement. No, I've heard them do this stuff on other albums. So it clearly is the band. Hmm. So it's more a pop album than anything else. But I think that works to its credit. I think you get tons of different flavors, tons of different little accents on things. Definitely they're going experimental. At times they're more conventional than they've ever been in previous releases. Hmm. And it all blends in together. It is a very Moorish album. It's a very, very Moorish album. It clocks in just about 40 minutes and I've yep. listened to it plenty of times. We'll listen to it more, but then I listened to the previous album shitloads as well. So, yep. yeah, I mean, they, they've got, they've got, they've got elements that make them sound like other artists for sure, but as a complete package, they are very unique. You know, they, they do something and it doesn't surprise me that they get you know as many million downloads or whatever because I can imagine it's a combination of people passing videos around going look at these guys play and there's that kind of almost that reaction base to that as well but they hit so many genres yeah that is is very like me and the daughter have been listening to this in the car and she will entertain rock Mm. that's not like she loves Ed Sheeran which upsets me um I was putting this on and she was nodding her head away at it because they have that appeal mm. so from a pop sensibility where you're not judging the musicality it totally fucking works as a musician it totally fucking works and if you're even remotely interested in production it totally fucking works so they are the, the, the triple the, the triple danger when it comes to releases it's it's very difficult to poke holes in it um, yeah. you know what I mean the, the only way you can poke holes in it is if you don't like a particular genre that they hit on or a particular style they play. But then yeah. that's kind of what the band's doing. They don't want to just sit in that one sound all the way through. So them being them would be the reason that you might have an issue with the band. So mm. yeah, I think it's I think it's fucking great. Yeah. Like everything I'd heard before sounded great. Surprise, surprise, the album sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Indeed. Um I um I kind of felt like I've always felt like Polyphia were a bit of a singles band for me anyway. Um I would try and go through their albums but I felt like I'd gravitate to certain songs rather than like a full album um, Is that the songs that fit more in line with the music you like as opposed to Probably Yeah Probably yeah um, Yeah I just I think I I just preferred the style of certain singles because um, as you said they have a very eclectic sound um, and I feel like this album does sound like an album full of singles but I feel like each track did have something that kind of blended it all together um 
I think it's uh, I think it's probably the most consistent sounding album they've had, in my opinion. I think there's a there is a, a kind of vibe that travels throughout the album and kind of holds it all together, ran, rather than it sounding like a bunch of songs with no connection to each other. Um, some of that I think is the the kind of rhythmical element of it. The, the tracks do all have a very kind of flowing, kind of relaxed groove to them, um, regardless of the style. Um, and the other is certain guitar licks or motifs that they use throughout the album to keep some sort of link between them. Um, on the on the point of the the kind of rhythm though, I just love how how groovy this is. Like as a drummer, like this is just fucking so good to listen to. Um, it's an album that you can either it's weird you can either totally chill out to it and just have it on in the background, enjoy the vibe, or you could sit and like intently. Yeah pick this apart and just kind of bask in the the virtuosity of the playing because the playing is insane on this like so good if you watch like the the videos they've made um you know certain singles from the album and you just watch them just you know doing their thing it's extraordinary to watch um the the way they incorporate all those styles into one is very impressive on its own but the way they deliver it is just levels above um, and you, you can hear, like, as you go through the album, as you've said, Duncan, yeah, this is a very um, pop kind of laden. It's kind of like progressive pop, I suppose. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah. But you can hear, you can still hear the older kind of influences and styles coming through in the guitar. Like, if you can hear, like, the influences of like guys like Guthrie Govan, mm-hmm. um, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Um, but then you get that kind of modern streak um, coming through from, like, guys like, uh, like Pliny or... Um, like the kind of the bluesier side of like Nick Johnson, but it's not just the guitars. As I said, this is not just a guitarist album. The drums are insane. Like he is, even when he's just playing in the pocket, you know what I mean? And he's just grooving. It's just like, that's so fucking cool. But then, you know, other times he'll throw in these little fills and flourishes and just make you like stop and go, what? He's what a sick actually- drummer, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, like when you think about how drummers play, I, yeah. I, I always get the impression that he's kind of just sitting back and just... Yep. In the zone, in the zone yeah. all the way through. It's, it is a delight to listen to. Yeah, it's one of those albums that you, like I'll instantly, I'll hear a fill or a lick and I'll, and I'll rewind it because I want to try and figure out how he's actually put that together. Um, bass playing, a guy called Clay Gober is just, wow, like what a beast of a bassist. Um, all over the fretboard, you know, he's, and he's not scared to throw in, you know, different bits of slapping and popping and stuff. Um, but I actually thought it, it never became too much. Even though these guys have all got really impressive skills, they, they know when to let one person kind of take the lead and the rest is to kind of rein it all in. And it, it, it flows very naturally, it never feels like, like forced at all. Um, when, I, when I saw the list of guests, I was like, holy shit, like one, there, there's a, a lot of guests on this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that the guest spot really works well. I think they do the job of kind of breaking the album up so it doesn't become too overbearing with just like virtuoso playing all the time um most of them i liked a couple of didn't but there's a it just get again down to different kind of different styles and tones um i think um yeah there was maybe maybe two that weren't to my taste but i can totally understand why they picked them on the release um one of my favorites though was a uh, track three it's called the audacity um yeah. and it features a musician called um anomaly um it's, it's a keyboard player and this track, man, that is just so funky. It's unreal. Like it sounds like an old kind of Hammond organ that he's using, yep. and that just like intensifies the funkiness on on that track. It's so good. Um, ABC, obviously, as well with Sophia Black, um, really catchy, and and really sees the band leaning into that pop side heavy on that. They track. could do, just do an album. That's the thing. Yep. That's the thing. When you listen to the tracks, like they could just easily do an album of any one of these songs. Yeah. Yeah, and it'd be, of, it'd be of that high level all the way through. It's yeah. nuts. I like the fact that though, even though when they lean right right into the kind of pop side of things, it's there's still enough of Polyphia's personality all over yeah, it. It yeah. doesn't become about the singer. Yeah. Um, and, and towards the end of the track, obviously, they, they heavy up a little bit, you know, with, um, on track 10 with um, is it Chimera and then 11 Bloodbath featuring yeah. uh, Chino. Um, but I thought it was a really cool dynamic between Chino's you know, that kind of signature sleepy vocal style and then you've got the kind of almost kind of gentier guitar licks, um, great melodies from Chino as always. Um, and then you've got Steve Vai with that collaboration closing the album, which is just all the guitar licks and solos you can imagine and it's, uh, it's just super impressive um 
the only the only like concern I had at first when I read the press release and I was like, how many producers have they got involved in this? Because there seems to be a lot on this bit of paper. A pop album that modern pop albums have twenty yeah. producers. Like, it's just like, like it used to be what? one guy. Yeah. It used to be one guy. We're in the wrong business. Yeah, like I was thinking to myself that I mean it potentially could have it could sound like a dog's dinner, you know what I mean? Yep. Because there's so many people involved. Um but I think actually it's fairly steady in quality right across the album. I didn't feel like there was a massive jump between production styles. Um, it's mainly changes in like drum tones or the, the vocal production that changes. Um, the guitars and bass stay fairly consistent. Um, and I think it's, it's produced very well for a, a kind of modern pop album. It's very, uh, very slick, um, but it suits the styles that they mix together. Um, I think there's enough of a like punch in the kind of proggy kind of gentier parts without it sound it doesn't sound like a metal production it's got a very nice warm kind of low end for the r&b and the hip-hop elements as well um yeah i i thoroughly enjoyed this i think it's probably the first polyphia album that um i will listen to and there's only maybe a couple of tracks that i didn't really enjoy um definitely definitely a band that seemed to be getting more and more impressive as it goes on which is just kind of mind-blowing um, so, what we're thinking scores for this one, Kyle? What did you you score the new one from Polyphia? It's just personal taste. I just don't mm-hmm. gel with it. That's it. I agree with everything you say, but it's just it just didn't die with me. So I'm going to go three out of five. Okay, uh, Duncan. A four point five. Um, I think it's pretty much there. Uh, yeah. I, I honestly don't think they're that far. But once again, it's who can predict where they go next. You yeah. you literally can't predict. You know what the core sound will sound like, but you don't know what they're going to bring in. Yeah. Um, I probably, on the kind of poppier side of things, have the more forgiving taste than a lot of these. I listen to a lot of pop music as well. Yeah. Um, not always modern stuff, but I, you know, I, I have my wants. So all that stuff worked for me. There wasn't a guest appearance in here or a style they hit on that didn't sound right. good. So this is not like I will listen to this album again, and again, and again. Um, I just think I don't know. I, 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 it's not it's not their best album. I mm. think we've still to hear their best album. So four point five. Yeah. Nice. Um, not a huge amount to dislike for me. Um, as I said, it was mainly there was a couple of the vocal performances that just weren't to my liking style wise. Um, the track with um, Lil West um, was just a bit. It was kind of. What, what was that name, Dave? Lil West. <laughs> <laughs> is that his name um, was I I don't know it felt a bit too kind of on the nose like the the whole kind of like Latin American acoustic guitar thing I feel like that's been done to death in pop songs um, and then the, the track with um, Snot the, the rapper not the band um, yeah. just it wasn't really my style um, um, from kind of musically or, or lyric perspective um, I think I mean there's a couple of tracks you could argue maybe gets gets a bit a little bit self-indulgent musically possibly but it's just it's that type of album you know what i mean it's also if you could play like that yeah yeah that's the thing like it's not as if they're 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 fucking around they're going like that's how he plays yeah <laughs> like, that's, so yeah. that's you know i mean to him yeah. it's maybe not self-indulgent at all to him that's just possibly. maybe him being a regular guy yeah, uh, so. yeah that i mean and that is their whole thing isn't it so um it's, I think it is. It's fairly well balanced um, for the majority of the album. But um, out with that, I think when I'm in the mood for something chilled, um, but it also kind of satisfy, satisfies the want for something with a bit of musicianship as well, I'll definitely come back and spin this. Uh, it's a four out of five for me on this one from Polyphia. So, uh, new Polyphia, remember that you will die out on the 28th of October on Rise Records. Uh, links below to the band's Facebook um, and to the pre-order. Check it out. Let us know what you think. If you've heard any singles, drop some comments in below. Uh, that is the review. Thank you for checking it out. We'll be back with another review very soon. But until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, everyone. <laughs>